I am going to take you on a tour of my whole house backup generator setup. The generator I chose to power the house is made by Champion and it's 8,750 starting watts, 7,000 running watts, and it is an inverter generator. The reason I chose the inverter is because it produces clean power for electronic devices. And of course, every home is full of electronic stuff. Everything's electronic these days, so if you don't get an inverter generator and you try to power electronics, you may have problems uh, with the electronics functioning properly or the electronics may not function at all. So this is the biggest inverter generator that Champion makes. And it is on wheels. So I store it in the garage and uh, it's pretty easy to wheel it around. And it is, even though it is an open frame generator, Champion has designed it to be quieter, but it still does make a fair amount of noise, but in an emergency, I don't think I would be too concerned about noise. I'll go ahead and fire it up. It does have an electric start. And this is a 240 volt plug, and this is where you connect the generator. So 240 volts is important because when you connect the generator to the house, it will power both sides of the circuit breaker. If it was a 120 volt generator, then it would not be able to, it would only power half of your panel. It power half of the breakers in the house, but this one, because it's 240 volts, will power um, all the breakers. And here's the cable. So the male end plugs into the generator, and the female end is what plugs into the house. This generator does come set up with a neutral bonded to frame ground. Now a generator can only have one ground. So if you're gonna connect a generator like this to the house, the house has a ground. So in order to do that, you need to disconnect the ground on the generator to the frame, which is you know one wire, one bolt, and Champion does give you the instructions on which wire to disconnect in order to disconnect that ground on the frame. And then after I did it, I added this sticker which says the neutral unbounded for home or RV use. So I guess I should cover that up because it's, it's no longer bonded. Let me show you the plug that I had installed. So this plug cost about $50, $55. So it's got a, a cover that keeps it watertight when you're not using it. And that's, this is where the, the female plug plugs in from the extension cord. It's made by Reliance. It's got some uh, 10 gauge wires that run through this conduit. It goes into the bottom of my outside 
panel box. So we'll go ahead and open this up. So th this row of breakers is for the service coming in from the from the outside. So one thing about having a generator, it's really important that before you connect a generator that you disconnect your outside service by flipping this large bar over. And then this little bar here forces you to disconnect your service before you engage this breaker which goes to the generator. See right now I can't I can't engage it. You have to slide this bar over. And in order to slide this bar up, you've got to switch this off, slide this bar up, and then you can kick in your breaker to the generator. And there is a, a startup procedure that uh, is right here. But with this setup, there's no way you can connect your generator and power it up without disconnecting your service. And you must have this in order to legally connect a generator to your house. And this was like another $50 part plus this 30 amp double pull breaker. That was about another, I don't know, $20, $20 or something. Plus some 10, 10 gauge wiring to wire from this through the conduit to the plug. Of course, you don't want to do this yourself. You want to use a uh, electrician, even though I did it myself. So that's, uh, that's just a short tour of my generator setup. And this powers everything in the house, including two refrigerators, a freezer, the only thing it doesn't power is the central air. And I have tested it and it works great. This generator costs about $1,500 plus another uh, about a $150 worth of parts. And uh, so for less than $1,700, I can power my house which in the winter time in Utah, if your power goes out, you don't have a furnace. But with this generator, generator connected, I can keep my furnace powered up in the winter time, as long as I have gasoline, of course. And this generator can be converted to run on natural gas or propane. And I am planning on doing the conversion. Anyway, hope you enjoyed my tour.